All right, Tim, you want to get us started? Sure. Welcome, everyone, to our virtual kickoff meeting for the Broward County Transit Comprehensive Operation Analysis. Um, as we get started, I'd first like to go over our agenda, and then we'll introduce our team. Um, our team, or welcome our team and show you our team here first. Uh, talk about the project overview, what a COA is, and, and give you a little uh, insight into that. Talk about some of the existing conditions analysis that we've uh, already performed. We're going to spend a good portion of our time um, in this meeting on the discussion and the online survey and really get you guys to interact with us and, and participate in some, some uh, questionnaires as well as we go along. And then I'll close out this uh, with our next steps. With that, I'll go ahead and introduce Corey Cuff Lonergan, uh, CEO of BCT, to give us a, a few wise words. Thank you so much, Tim, and good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight to participate in Broward County's Comprehensive Operational Analysis Study. Uh, as Tim mentioned, I am Corey Cuff Lonergan, the CEO, General Manager for Broward County Transit. And our mission is to engage our community members on their needs uh, with regard to transportation. Your involvement here will help provide, I'm sorry, your involvement here will help provide invaluable feedback to us so that we can understand what your needs are and how we can best serve them. We really encourage you tonight to be engaged, to ask questions, challenge us on some of our philosophy and our thoughts here, and to please keep an open mind as we move forward through this process. We have a great team here. We've got a lot to share, and I hope you enjoy the presentations. Thank you, and have a good evening, everyone. Thanks, Corey. We'll go ahead and, and introduce the rest of the team, starting with Lynn, Kalila, Barney, and then I'll introduce uh, the consultants. Lynn? We can't hear Lynn, um, so we'll go ahead and introduce her uh, without her voice. Uh, Marketing Communications and Customer Relations Manager for BCT. I'll turn it over to Kalila. Good evening, everyone. Kalila French, the Project Manager. I'm with Broward County Transit, BCT. Barney? Good evening, everyone. Barney McCoy, Assistant General Manager for Service and Strategic Planning for Broward County Transit. Glad to have you here this evening. And I'm Tim Crowbonds. I am with Nelson Nygaard, Senior Principal, and I am serving as the Project Manager as the Consulting Team. I'll go ahead and turn it over to George and then Megan. Hello, everyone. My name is George Meyer. I'm Deputy Project Manager, also with Nelson Nygaard. And hi, my name is Megan McMullen. I work with Nelson Nygaard as well as the Community Engagement Lead. And we're really happy to have uh, a team of engagement partners um, with Holt Communications. Uh, we have Yvette and Greg on the line here from that team. Um, we have Quest on our team and CTS Engineering all helping out with the engagement piece. So Megan, I think you're covering housekeeping. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so before we get started, I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping items with everyone. Um, as you notice, as you logged in, unless you're a panelist, your videos and microphones are automatically turned off for a large group meeting, um, but we are paying close attention to the chat. You'll see I already started us off with our first message. Um, so feel, feel free to submit any comments, questions um, that way, and we'll keep an eye on that. You also see that you have a Q&A option. Um, and we've already gotten our first question in. So if you have questions, you can submit it that way. Um, and we'll be doing some interactive polling throughout. Um, just as a note, this meeting will be recorded and it will be posted to the project website. Um, and really, you know, as Corey mentioned, we are here to listen. We want to hear from you. We're planning to spend most of the time uh, tonight doing some interactive exercises. Um, and so we really appreciate you sharing your insights with us. Mm -hmm. I'll start with a project overview. So what is a comprehensive operations analysis? It's really a study to assess the existing system and identify where their improvements can be made. Um, it's really to kind of root out better effectiveness in the system and efficiency. And it's really to respond to how Broward County is changing. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit later about how it's growing and how it's growing very fast. 
and now people are changing their travel patterns within the county. Uh, COAs are typically done every five to 10 years. In areas like Broward County, they're done more often because things are changing more often and we have to re-examine re those, uh, those things. There's some key elements of a COA, certainly data inputs and analysis. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the data we collected here uh, in a few minutes. Market analysis, where is transit most needed and where is the biggest demand for transit within in the community? And travel needs, how are people moving around and how can transit best fit those movements in the community? We also have a public and stakeholder input process as part of a COA. And unique to this COA, is the Primo network. Uh, it's an established 15 year major capital investment in premium transit services. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on. That is a baseline for us in this study and to build upon. Um, the results of a COA is a near-term, a mid-term and a long-term plan. And we'll talk a little bit more about that again in later slides. So what does this cover? It covers the entire county. As I mentioned, the Primo network will be the baseline. That includes the commuter rail, light rail, bus rapid transit, and high frequency bus services. But our study in the COA is going to look at how do we serve the rest of the county where those services are not? And how do we effectively uh, link those services to the premium services for Primo and make it the most effective system for the county in responding to uh, the residents of this county? So what are our project goals? First and foremost, modernize the network. Um, that's through a, a combination of um, new services, uh, new types of services, and we'll talk a little bit more about that, and really addressing the projected demand into the future and accommodating that through service improvements. And of course, basing that off the Primo network is the baseline. Uh, we want to boost ridership, and we feel that the recommendations we put together as part of this study will improve the transit system and by default, people will be more attracted and it will uh, produce more ridership. Another aspect of, of this process is updating the service performance uh, for service standards and performance uh, metrics for BCT. This will allow them to continue to evaluate the system and make sure it is an optimal network um, uh, going forward. And last year, our goal is really to identify inefficiencies in the system. And whether they be operational or systemic uh, inefficiencies, and really develop some um, uh, solutions to maybe reallocate resources to eliminate inefficiencies and provide those resources where they're in the most demand. So, some of the key uh, deliverables as part of the COA include a lot of information and analysis. Um, we're going to talk a bit more about ridership in a minute. But that's a key element. Where is the ridership today? Where is it the highest? Where is there no ridership? And how do we move resources to serve that ridership the best we can? How are the passengers moving around in the system? Um, we've done some surveys and we'll allude to that a little bit more in, a, in, a, in another slide, but understanding how they're moving around the community and making sure that we provide transit services that are easy, safe, reliable, and convenient uh, to uh, the residents of, of Broward County. I mentioned the service standards is an output as well. There's three service plans that we'll be ultimately developing, a near term for the first five years, a midterm for the next five years, and a long term um, for the, the following five years. Again, services that um, accommodate and support the Primo network. These might be uh, new route alignments, they may be new routes, they may be elimination of some routes, um, changes in frequency, service hours, and maybe even the introduction in some areas of new types of services like mobility on demand or microtransit. And it's very similar to like an Uber or Lyft type service in the, in the community. So let's talk a little bit about what you may know a little bit about from previous uh, work that BCT has been doing. Um, a few years back, uh, the residents of Broward County passed a one cent surtax for transportation, and it was named the Mobility Advancement Program, or MAP. Once that was established, BCT embarked on a, a premium mobility uh, plan in developing that plan for premium services within Broward County. Um, it's inclusive of major capital investments, uh, services like commuter rail, light rail, bus rapid transit, or BRT, 
and high frequency bus services. This charts out improvements in several quarters throughout the county over the coming 15 years. This study is something that generally gets updated about every 10 to 15 years. Recently, BCT completed what's called a transit development plan. And this is really more focused on a strategic vision for the county, includes all modes, um, and it really looks at a 10-year picture. Um, this is typically updated, uh, minimal, uh, excuse me, a minor update every year, and then a major update every five years. Uh, it, is, it is also a state funding requirement um, for funding that comes from the Florida Department of Transportation, and it does establish a big picture um, a direction for the agency for the coming 10 years. The COA is what we're talking about this evening, is really developing a bunch, a bunch of service improvements over a course of 15 years that'll improve the efficiency and serve the residents of Broward County uh, much better. Um, it also is focused on a number of different services, local bus services, um, commuter services, express bus services, mobility on demand or microtransit, and it's integrating with the premium transit services that are identified in the Primo network. Um, this plan, as I mentioned before, is about a 15-year plan in five-year increments. And these are generally um, every five to 10 years updated. It's meant to operationalize the TDP and really integrate the premium network, Primo network, excuse me. So where are we in the phases? We started this project back in September, and a lot of the last few months and fall has been focused on data collection and understanding customer needs and analyzing the system. So we've done onboard surveys, we've done what's called ride checks, getting the ridership information at a stop level, and we've produced some per service performance reports uh, for BCT staff. We have an online survey that we're going to talk about here shortly that's up on the, the BCT website. And we're out doing meetings and pop-up events within the community. As we move into the second phase of this project, we're going to be developing recommendations and looking at key opportunities to improve services within the county, doing additional surveys online, um, pop-up events, meetings in, in the community, and then sharing those recommendations with everyone in the public to comment on. And those will be shared through the website, interactive manner in which you can go in and look at those and and add comments to them. Ultimately, once we get those comments and we make modifications to the plan, we'll be developing the final plans in the near, mid, and long-term plans in, in this fall and be uh, done with the study in December of this year. So what's expected here? Um, actually, in the, in the early 2024, we've been doing stakeholder listening sessions in the community, and those will run through mid-February. We're out talking to uh, community um, uh, members, cities, community organizations now. That'll run through mid-March. We have this virtual kickoff call today. We have our online, online survey that is currently up on the BCT website. And we've uh, been scheduling a series of pop-up events at community events and at transit centers throughout the community. Those will run through, through mid-March. Existing conditions, where are we with that? So as I mentioned earlier, we're, we're doing a lot of data collection. We did an onboard survey of the BCT services and it's commonly called an origin destination survey because it really looks at how people start their trip, where they get on the bus, how they use the service, including transfers, where they get off the bus and where's their ultimate destination. It's really for us to understand how people are moving in the system. We also put equipment on the buses called automatic passenger counters that count every boarding, people getting on the bus and people getting off the bus at every bus stop in the system, every trip in the system, every day of the week. So we know where the ridership is really occurring and where there's no ridership. And it helps us plan where we want to put our services or recommendations. We've also been out with customer surveys at transit centers and at buses in the fall, talking to riders understanding what's working, what's not, and what kind of improvements they would like to see in the system. Doing the same thing with VCT staff as well. Um, what we're currently doing and plan to continue to do is the stakeholder briefings through this month, pop-up events, community events, February, March. Our website is live. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that here in a second. And the online survey is up on the website. 
some of you have, have lived in Broward County for a long time. You've seen a lot of change. Uh, this is a very high growth area. It's a very attractive area. And um, we've seen a lot of growth in population employment over the last, uh, say, 20 years or so. Uh, just in the 10 years leading up to COVID, we saw a 12% increase in, in population. That's expected to grow another 15% by 2045. Likewise, employment's growing at even a higher percentage rate, um, showing that there's a, a big economic development that's occurring within Broward County. The economy is doing well. That's expected to grow at 21% um, by 2045. We saw a spike in unemployment back in the, the peaks of, of COVID. It went up to around 14%, um, both here in Florida and the region. But it's back down to less than 3%. And if you look at unemployment over the last 30 years, that's some of the lowest unemployment we've seen in 30 years. Um, so because of all these jobs, we've seen a lot of opportunity for folks within Broward County um, to be employed and, and to spend money and, and improve the economy. And that's really uh, shown in the drop in poverty within um, not only the state of Florida, but Broward County as well. So last on the existing conditions, we've been doing quite a bit of analysis and George uh, is our guru in, in service analysis, is really looking at where service may be most needed. And we look at things like population and employment density. Um, where are the most people and where are the most jobs? They typically generate the most transit trips and where the transit should be serving. We also look at things like low income, zero car households, and we create what's called a transit propensity index. It's really a needs index where we feel those areas are in most need of transit services today and in going forward in the future. One thing we found is that um, the higher population and employment uh, density areas are all served by current bus service. Now, that doesn't mean they're necessarily served well. It doesn't mean that they these services go where people want to go, that they are serving the hours that people want the service to run, or as frequent as they would like it to run. So those are some of the things we look at as part of this study to under then identify how do we modify the system to really work better for the residents of Broward County. And lastly, I mentioned the future Primo network is really integrating all the service recommendations that we do develop to integrate with and support and enhance the effectiveness of the Primo network services um, going forward. All right, it's time to start hearing from you. Uh, we are going to begin our discussion portion. Um, and one of the ways we're going to be doing that is with some interactive polling. Um, so if you have your phone with you, go ahead and get that out. Um, we'll be doing um, an activity with that. If it's easier for you to just submit your responses to the polls in the Zoom meeting chat, maybe you're just on your phone already, that's no problem at all. You're welcome to submit it through the Zoom meeting chat too, and our team will be monitoring those responses to include them. I'm going to go ahead and post um, this in the chat as well for your reference. So how do you actually get logged in and participate as part of the poll? We're using a program called Mentimeter, um, and the website you go to for that is Menti. M-E-N-T-I dot com, and it'll ask you to enter a code. You'll enter the code on the screen. It's 82439358. That code and the website will be on the top of all the slides we're about to look at, so if you need to get back to it, that'll be no problem. Um, you can also scan the QR code on the screen using the camera on your phone. I'm going to pause us on this slide for just a minute, um, give everyone a chance to scan, get logged in, then we'll keep going. Okay. And again, if you are not comfortable using Mentimeter, you're welcome to enter your comments in the chat. Um, you can click on the little speech bubble icon and that'll pull up the chat menu for you. Um, and you can submit your comments there. I'm going to pull over our presentation. Okay, 
So we have a warm up question and just to give you an, an easy way to get familiar with the polling software before we get into the real ones. And I see some people are already guessing away over here. Um, so the first question is, how many people who live in Broward County and are employed also work in Broward County? We have a few, a few options here. This is one of the multiple choice style questions we'll be using. I see so far we have 11 people have responded. We have about 31 people on the call. So I'm going to wait a moment, give everyone a chance to do their practice answer and get set up. All right. Looks like you guys know Broward County well, seeing a lot of people have chosen the correct answer. About 77% of Broward County residents who are working also work in Broward County. All right, next question is a warm up for our open response comment type. Um, so this is where you'll actually type something, um, your unique insights. Um, and for this practice question, we wanna know what is your favorite place to hang out on a Saturday or Sunday weekend morning um, in Broward County? Where do you like to go? All right, see we have some active folks heading to the gym, uh, doing some shopping at the mall, a few people heading over to the beach, some local parks, kickball, more beach fans. Got an active group with us today. <laughs> okay, great. I'm gonna start off on our more BCT focused questions. All right, for a little bit of context for our group, um, how often do you actually use BCT service? And this is just sort of a typical, typical week in the last year or so. Four more days per week, two to three days per week, one day a week, once or twice a month, less than once a month, or pretty much never. And just as a, as a reminder, as Megan said, if, if you're not on Mentee, you can just post in the um, in the chat here and we'll we'll call it out. Yep. All right, so it looks like most people are using it probably a few times a month, maybe less than that. We also have a chunk we're using it, you know, two, three, four days a week. So a range of experiences with BCT here which is good. Okay, so when you use BCT, if you use BCT, what type of service are you typically using? Um, how often do you use local bus? Never, eh, kind of medium or frequently, and then same with each of the other services. So we have local bus, community shuttle, express or commuter bus, rail, and paratransit or ADA service. So far, most people seem to be most familiar with local bus, not quite coming in on frequent <laughs> for any of these services, but most popular seems to be local bus for this group. We've got a few people who are using rail fairly moderately, um, and then occasional use for community shuttles, express or commuter bus, um, and paratransit. Go to the next question. So this one's open-ended. Uh, we hope you're as enthusiastic about this as your weekend morning activities. Um, when you do use BCT service, what are the main reasons? Where are you going? Why are you choosing to ride transit? Looks like we have a number of people who are using it to commute, heading to work, stress-free experiences as an attractor, not having to manage those bad drivers, an easy way to get to the airport without having to drive or park, running errands around town, seeing the, the stress <laughs> popping up as a theme for many, wanting to let someone else take the wheel, transit enthusiasm, getting to downtown, and then um, not having a car and the expensive services like Uber. Great. 
All right, next up. So when you do ride BCT, how are you typically getting to the bus stop or transit center? Are you walking or rolling? Are you biking, taking a scooter, getting a ride from somebody you know, um, Uber, Lyft, or taxi to the bus stop? How are you doing that first or last part of your journey? All right, so far it looks like most people are walking or rolling to the bus stop. We've got four or so cyclists, number of people who have uh, someone close to them dropping them off, one or two for scooter, Uber, Lyft, and then other. If you're getting there another way, we wanna hear in the chat, <laughs> how are you getting there? like walking or rolling is definitely the most popular for this group. Okay, so on the times when you aren't using transit um, for some of your trips, what typically discourages you from choosing transit as a way to get where you need to go? This is another one of those open-ended, or this one is uh, has a few choices. Um, the next one will get some detail in an open-ended version. We're seeing from some people that it takes too long, not reliable, infrequent service, too far to walk to a stop, poor bus stop amenities. Takes too long and not reliable, definitely coming in the top. All right, looks like we're settling in about how many people have been responding. So it looks like main reason is it takes too long to ride transit. Okay, so thinking positive term, sort of flip side of that, what would make you more likely to ride transit in the future? If you could imagine the conditions that would really let you easily, comfortably ride transit, what would change from your current experience? And I'd like to add, if um, you're trying to answer any of the questions in the chat, that you can feel free to add it to the Q&A as well. Um, and we could get an answer that way too. Thanks, George. I see the, a comment that there was an issue with the chat. I think I just changed the setting, so you should be able to message everyone. So feel free to test it out, um, submit any comments that way. Okay, so reasons people may ride transit more in the future, on-time service, more direct routes, reliability and some shade for stops in that Florida heat, faster, better destination selection, I'm seeing a few comments about having more frequency, people are interested in dedicated bus lanes to improve the timing, uh, interest in BRT or bus rapid transit and rail. So again, those dedicated spaces for the bus to run. Not having to go to terminal hubs, getting the frequency 10 minutes or faster, having timed transfers, fans at the bus stops in the summer, getting a few heat related comments. And that 10 to 15 minute service, better reliability, better tech info available, easier live tracking so you know where the bus is and you don't miss it, more comments for shade and seating at bus stops, tap to pay, a little bit easier payment system, smarter transit, better connections. This is great. This is your favorite question so far. We've got more comments here than on anything else, so feel free to keep them coming. lower fares. Okay, great. All right, so we've gotten some comments about the frequency of buses, where they go, but we know it also matters what time of day service is available. Um, and so when we're thinking about which times of day to potentially adjust um, the 
the service that's offered. We want to know which times of day you think there's not enough service or when do you think there's plenty of service? So thinking early morning, so you know, starting around 5 a.m., that those first shift jobs, late morning, you know, starting around after 9 a.m., midday, around lunchtime, late afternoon, going into, you know, 3, 4 p.m., evening from, you know, about 5 to 8, um, late night, and then those overnight. Looks like most people are leaning, not all the way, but closer towards plenty of service for late morning, late afternoon. I think there's not enough service for overnight, late night, or early morning. This question type takes a little bit longer to respond with the sliders for each of those. So we'll give you all a minute to respond. All right, so as this is settling out, seeing none of the dots are very close to the plenty of service side, mostly on the side towards not enough service, and especially for those early morning um, to evening, late night, overnight times. Okay. All right. I saw some of you said you would be more likely to ride transit in the future if it went to certain destinations. Now's your chance. Where are you trying to go via transit? Which additional destinations do you wish that you could get to? Let us know. And feel free to also mention like where you're coming from trying to get to there. Anywhere else you'd like to go by transit? Okay, having some coverage gaps in Weston and Davie. Getting to the airport. I'm gonna assume the slow responses are you have many requests and you're typing many things right now. <laughs> we'll wait for them to come in. Out west, casinos, plantation to the airport more directly. And more for West Davy, Cooper City, more direct lines in West Tanya, a new route from Everglades Holiday. Okay, people are liking the Weston comment, especially for service in the afternoon. More airport requests, tri rail stations. Noticing there's less uh, passion for this question than changes to the experience. So it seems like the destinations maybe isn't the biggest biggest of your issues, or it seems like about frequency and times offered. Okay, great. If you think of any other location requests, feel free to submit those in the chat. A um, little preview for the survey. This is also something you can respond to in the online survey that we'll share with you so we can capture that information there as well. Okay, we've got a few slides coming up that are the same type of format, sort of an either or. Um, so as BCT looks at investing in transit improvements, all these things require resources, and we have a limited number of resources. Um, so we, it helps to get a sense of which uh, of these items are priorities for you in terms of those investments. So you'll see on each of these a pair of options, um, and you select the one that if you had to pick how you'd spend the dollar, you'd rather spend it on that. So the first pair is more frequent service or expanding service to new areas. It looks like so far the preference is for more frequent service by far. <laughs> and we do have a couple who would prefer expanding service to new areas. All right, next pair. Would you rather uh, prioritize on-demand rideshare service? So that's something where you're gonna either use an app to call it or you can call on the phone similar to Uber and Lyft and it comes and picks you up 
um, but there's no consistent route that you're going to, or a traditional fixed route service where, you know, you know, Route 11 always goes up and down the street. This is my bus stop I can go to. Um, you have the schedule on your phone. You're sort of hopping on to something ongoing rather than requesting something custom. Looks like so far, traditional fixed route service is the preference for this group. About nine people leaning towards that. Um, and not as many people interested in the on-demand service. Okay, next pair. Would you rather have more service during the day or more late night and early morning service in terms of investing over what there is today? So additions to available service. All right, so far this is Lining up pretty much with uh, that slider question that we had a few ago, uh, people are saying that late and early service is the bigger need, but it's almost neck and neck. If you haven't voted yet, you want to be the tiebreaker. <laughs> this is the time to vote. All right, settling in there just slightly in favor of more late night and early morning service. Okay, would you rather invest in faster routes that run along major corridors? You're probably having to walk a little bit further to get to them, but they're coming more often. Or slower routes, so lower frequency, that comes closer to your door. So it's not as direct, it's probably winding around to pick up more destinations, but you don't have to walk as far. But it's not coming as often. So far, this is the first one we've all been on the same page for. Everyone is voting in favor of faster routes along major roads. So willing to walk or roll or bike to get there, you want that faster service. Okay, and next up, would you rather invest in additional weekday service or additional weekend service? Again, this is on top of what's available currently. All right, so far it looks like weekday is the preference. All right, went in that higher frequency on weekdays. Great. Okay, I have a new question type. Um, this one's asking you to rank a few different options. So you should be able to drag and drop them um, to place your top choice in number one and your lowest priority in number five. You want to know which type of transit improvements are most important to you. Is it improving existing route frequency? Expanding to new areas that are not currently served? Offering late night, overnight, or early morning service? Providing new on-demand service? like on-demand rideshare, or better connections between routes with timed transfers. All right, too early to call, but so far improving existing route frequency coming in up top. And those time transfers, improved connections coming in as number two. Like we're a few people short for the number that have normally been voting. Go ahead and get that, that vote in on your priorities. All right, looks like we're pretty settled. Top priority is improving existing route frequency. Okay, I see we've been getting some comments in the Q&A, so comments in the chat about you've already started submitting your top personal requests. <laughs> this is the official time to share that with us. So uh, this is an open-ended response. What would be your top request for BCT to improve your transit experience? You get the magic wand, you get one wish. What is it? What would be your top request? 
And it looks like some of the comments over here are along the lines of um, like real time tracking type of um, improvements. Okay, great. Then GPS and, and uh, vehicle location availability. Great. All right, just in some new buses, on time frequent service, shelters and fans at bus stop. Few more people asking for frequent service, especially less than every 15 minutes. Kind of like what George was just saying, some interest in technology and better real time information about the buses, faster trips and transfers. I think if we had made this a word cloud, <laughs> the biggest word would be frequent. Looks like that's the main thing y'all are after. Okay. And on technology side, tap to pay, boarding, bench and shelter at every stop. Want to make sure everyone has a dignified waiting experience. Better bus tracking. Credit card payments on board. Payment options, frequency. Late night, 95 express service. More tap to pay, timing information. This is good. The payment and that information about the buses is coming up as a big priority in addition to frequency. Scheduling buses to make the connection, so that time to transfer. 75 Express to Miami. Okay, great. All right. That wraps up our Mapgenere portion. We're going to keep going um, and let you know about another way that you can share some more input. All right. Thanks so much, Megan. Um, so I am going to talk a little bit about our um, Mapgenere online survey. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can um, interact and engage with us and give feedback. Um, but one, I, one of the easiest, I think, and best ways of doing so is through our online survey. Um, and I think there, there are a lot of great things about the online survey. It's, it's, it's very easy. It's one of the best things, though, I think, is that um, it, it, you know, surveys have come a long way. And uh, there are mapping capabilities uh, built into the survey. So you can drill down into, and it'll show you in just, just a second with our preview of the survey here, you can drill down to specific routes. And you can click on those routes. And I highly encourage everyone on the, you know, to, to do so. Um, right here, yep, this is exactly what you would see in the online survey. And you can go, you can click on specific routes and you can um, check uh, various types of improvements. If maybe your improvement doesn't fit neatly in one of those box, boxes, please put in, you know, in the other, uh, what that improvement might be. Here's another map that, in, you know, you're not tied down just to routes either. You can click anywhere on the map um, and you can click on what type of improvement or, you know, something that you'd like to see. Um, better pedestrian or, or um, access or uh, connections and, and those sorts of things here. We have a question on um, on-demand ride share. So getting into kind of that mobility on-demand or microtransit space um, and then some trade-offs. Um, would you like to see more weekend service, more weekday service? So a lot of these questions were, um, you know, uh, gathering all these data points and we'll be uh, analyzing and, and looking and comparing and how everything um, is uh, like what the what the results end up being um, and then uh, you know all, all this information uh, feeds into uh, the transit um, uh, service improvements and so we we want this survey to go out to as many people as possible. Please, um, we're we're asking you to take the survey yourself, but then also help distribute the survey. You know, it's just a QR code, it's just a link. Get friends, family, um, you know, have grandma fill it out. Um, please, as many people as possible. The more input that we get, the better our um, uh, our our um, insights will be and uh, help us. You know, 
um, modify the network to how um, the community wants. So, and that's available in English and Spanish right now. We're working on Creole and Portuguese too. Um, and the survey will be open for the month of um, February and into March. All right, um, we're getting close to the end of the meeting um, and I appreciate everybody's patience and time uh, this evening in going through all these questions and giving us your insights and putting comments in the chat as well as the question and answer section. Um, what I would like to do is encourage you, like George was saying, to go online, take the survey. There's a QR code here, or you can also go just to the uh, Brower.org slash BCT slash COA um, website, and you can go directly to the survey. There. You scroll down about half ways and you'll see the survey there, and you can click on it and go through sort of as George uh, described it to you. Tell your friends and, and family and coworkers to do that too. The more input, more input we get, the better. Um, follow BCT on the social media and, and check your emails. If you've registered and you've registered your email, um, you'll be on an email list and there's a place you can do that on the website as well, um, where you can put your email in and be uh, notified of, of any project updates. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're creating the recommendations for service uh, improvements uh, this spring and, and into this summer. We'll be coming back in the summer um, with additional surveys, additional meetings, um, sharing those recommendations uh, with you in the public and asking for comments on those. And it'll allow us to refine them uh, and finalize them in the fall of, of this year. Just to kind of wrap up things, thank you again. Um, again, the project website's listed here. Uh, when you're on the project website, there's also a list of an email address. Any comments, anything that you didn't think of today to put in questions, comments, um, we'll go to this email address here, bctcoa at broward.org. Uh, survey link is here. And uh, Kalila, the project manager from BCT and myself, will be reviewing all those comments and bringing them in and uh, bringing them into the discussion for service recommendations. So with that, I want to thank everybody for attending this evening and uh, have a great evening. Thank you. I'll keep the meeting open for just a minute longer in case you have final comments that you're posting to the chat so we can collect those. Um, and I see some of you have been suggesting different ways that we can connect with uh, the BCT customers. If you have suggestions for how we can reach out to people um, and get more participation, we totally welcome those in the chat as well. Thank you. Uh, are the panelists able to stay behind? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to officially stop our recording.